Hello, and welcome once again to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Holler thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. And always to those of you that subscribe, view, comment, and respond. Today's lesson, ladies and gentlemen, Burning of the Quran, the Bible. Just burn them all. Now, I'm sure a lot of people will get quite upset with the title of this video, but again, I urge people to look at the video title and then observe the video before passing judgment. I know years ago, I used to be guilty of this. I'd see something if I didn't like the video or I didn't like the content of the subject of it. I would already have a biased uh, uh, decision or a way of thinking before I even observed the video and I would never observe it very long. Uh, since I've been doing teaching videos, I find a lot of people do that, I think, with even my teaching videos. And I urge people to listen to the whole video and that's what I do uh, these days. Uh, when I listen to some videos or some social media podcasts uh, before developing some kind of, uh, not judgment, but, you know, thoughts on what it was, uh, my opinion is of the video and so forth. And that's why this video is important. Now, people might get upset because of the uh, title of it. And that's understandable because it's mankind here we're not talking about. We're talking about the natural flesh of mankind. And we're talking about the world. We're talking about cultures. We're talking about civilizations and laws of the land, government rules and all this kind of things all intermixed, entwined in with these civilizations. And over the recent years, there's been, been a big uh, uh, stink, if you will, when someone burns the Quran, which is the holy book of the Muslim religion. And then in turn, they'll burn the Bible. And it seems like it's much less uh, bothersome to the world if the Bible gets burnt than it does if a Quran gets burnt. But I'm going to look at all of them here in this video and uh, why the topic uh, of the video or the title finished with burn them all. Now, we're going to look at it from scriptural. First of all, we're going to show you biblical references uh, from the Bible, where it says, Thou shalt not burn uh, this book, and thou shalt not burn any holy book that's of any religion that's of this world. We're going to find that scripture, and I'm going to read it to you. So if you want to take your Bibles and just hold on to it. I mean, you can page through it if you want. I have 31,102 verses here you can look at throughout this book, and you won't find a verse telling you anything of the sort. So what does that tell you? When you look at it from the Word of God, it's a truth that's not of this world. And you know from history, if you read the Bible, where there was things that were destroyed, not necessarily burned, but again, there was. What happened when the children of Israel uh, so be, uh, went, we were disobedient to God and to Moses and made the molten calf out of gold and was worshiping that. What happened? They, uh, Moses ended up coming down and ending up burning the calf back into the fire and taking the tablets of stone and throwing them down and destroying them. What did Jesus do when he came to uh, the temple? when the thieves and the robbers and the uh, Jewish people were gambling and doing all kinds of trading things in the house of God at that time uh, to make a profit. What did Jesus do? He utterly went in there and destroyed it. Now, you'll find this is quite interesting when you do a comparison probably uh, of what goes on with book burning, 
today, like the Quran or the Bible, as to what happened in the Old Testament. You ask yourself, well, why did, uh, why was the uh, Ten Commandment, Tablets of Stone, and the Molten Calf destroyed? The Golden Calf, I should say. Anyway, that's because of idolatry. That is because of what mankind did to them. They were corruptive. It was sinful. They perverted and disobeyed and turned it into a mockery of the, if you will, of what God's commandments were. And what did they do when Jesus cleansed the temple? What did they do to the temple? It contaminated it, perverted it, made it into something totally that it was not meant to be. Now, with that being said, and you re, now you can recall in more modern history when uh, the Nazi movement came into play around uh, 1929 in Germany, in somewhere in the early 30s, uh, don't quote me if it was like 1933 or something, they had a great book burning in uh, Germany. And uh, they wanted to get rid of all of the uh, authors, they wanted to get rid of the religious books, they wanted to get rid of everything that was would go against the Nazi party or the Third Reich, if you will, uh, to uh, so that Germany could have total control. So they had a big book, book burning, if you will. And now, if someone burns a Quran, oh my goodness, it's the sin of the world. Or if somebody burns a Bible, it's blasphemy, it's terrible, it's a sin. First of all, again in Scripture, and this is a Bible study of the... Uh, Holy Word of God, you can't find anything in there where he's going to denounce you for doing such an act. Now, from a uh, societal standpoint, from a cultural standpoint, from a governmental standpoint, it's a wrong thing to do. They make laws now, and they can call them hate crimes, they can call them insightful uh, to promote hate speech, all these kind of things, uh, and to promote violence by doing these acts. But that's mankind in a natural state doing that. But getting back to the Bible, again, we have recorded in Scripture where things were destroyed. And again, if you look at the reasons why they were destroyed, it's very important to understand that because it's going to come to play in this video. When the tablets of stone, which were the Ten Commandments, the moral commandments of God, and the golden calf was an idolatry item, worshiping a false god. But the tablets of stone also got destroyed. You have to remember that. Although later on, they, uh, the Lord did make him a new one uh, for Moses. But in his anger, in the disobedience against God, he destroyed the tablets of stone, the original tablets. And then Jesus had no problem going in and utterly cleansing the temple and destroying everything that the people had for their own profits, for their own advantage of the flesh. Now, how does that play into uh, burning of the Quran or the Bible today or the book burning that was took place in Nazi Germany back in the th uh, 1930s? What they all have in common is the defiling, the defacing, and the idolatry and the worshiping of other gods in other ways and other means than the God of all creation. All of these things have that in common. Whether it's the book burning of uh, Germany in uh, the 1930s, or burning of a Quran today, or a Bible. Now, why would I say a Bible and the Quran today falls into that category? For the simple reason, ladies and gentlemen, the Quran is a separate holy book of a separate religion, totally separate, supposedly, from Christianity. Although when you look at them, uh, it's not improbable to think that the uh, Islam is an offset of Roman Catholicism. But nevertheless, they have their own book. There's another religion that has their own book. It's Mormonism. What about Roman Catholicism? They have their own Holy Bible according to Roman Catholicism. 
So you have all these extra books. Now you also take, for example, the, the Bible. There's over 80,000, 80,000 versions worldwide of the original version of the Holy Scriptures. And again, like I mentioned, you have the Quran, which is a false religion of Islam. Then you have the Book of Mormon, which is a false religion under the realm of Christianity. So you have these books that are written that people cling to. And they cling to these versions where they've changed in the, in the religion of Christianity. They change the original Bible to make it easier to understand, to make the language more careful and easier for people to grasp according to what mankind's religions want to teach and preach according to their doctrines so that it's justifiable in their minds, which is finite, and the minds of those that read them or fall under the realm of the religion of Christianity and of certain denominations. In fact, there is even a woke presentations of the Bible coming out of today, which means that they're changing things to incorporate the gay movement, uh, all these other dumb that uh, they're having out there in civil society now, of course, where everybody wants to get along and everybody needs to accept everybody else for who and what they are. Now that even goes against scripture because God is not a respecter of persons. So if you're going to live a biblical life or you're going to live a life for Jesus Christ according to the revelation, the mystery of Jesus Christ, which is uh, the doctrine for the body of Christ church today, which is found in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ from Romans to Philemon, you're going to make enemies. But I can sit here and tell you I have no problem with anybody wanting to burn a Bible that has any revised edition to it. None whatsoever. I have no problem with somebody who wants to burn the Quran. That's their business. If they want to do it, they're burning something that is totally an idolatry item uh, that's worshiping a false god. I have no problem if somebody wants to burn a Book of Mormon. I say burn them all for the simple fact of what they are and what they represent. That's the thing people don't want to accept because they want to get along. See, you have to get along. You don't want civil unrest. You don't want to promote hate speech. You don't want to cause problems any place. So you just shut up and go with the flow. But isn't that what Satan wants you to do? Do you have the courage to take a stand with the truth of the Word of God and present it for people to view and let them make up their own minds? They can condemn me all they want. I don't care. But if they condemn what is being presented, they're condemning the very Word of God. Because it's very interesting in Scripture. Because there is going to come a time, ladies and gentlemen. It hasn't happened yet. It's in the ages to come. After uh, Jesus Christ's second coming, something's going to happen as it was prophesied about in Scripture a long time ago. And you can find it in the book of Zechariah, chapter 13 of all chapters. And if you can start in verse 1, and I want to read it to you. It says here, and this is chapter 13 of the book by Zechariah. In that day, there shall be a fountain opened in the house of David. That's the new Jerusalem, ladies and gentlemen. And to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and uncleanliness. And verse 2, And it shall come, but come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to pass out of the land. In verse 3, And it shall come to pass that, that any that when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that begot him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live. For thou speakest lies in the name of his mother. It, 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 it said, lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and his mother shall begot him, shall trust him through when he prophesies. And verse 4, And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his vision when he hath prophesied neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive now that's coming ladies and gentlemen now we're going to show you another important scripture 
And this is found in the book of Jeremiah. Now, this is something that was prophesied about that's going to happen in the ages to come. It has not happened yet. We're going to start in Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the day come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Jacob, or Judah, excuse me. Verse 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them out of the land to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, though I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. He's not talking about the first covenant with the, with the, uh, uh, the nation of Israel. This is a new one. Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Here it comes. That those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. And write in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. Here is verse 34 that they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquities and remember their sin no more. That is what's coming. Burn them all. They're not going to be needed one day in the ages to come. They're not going to be needed, ladies and gentlemen, according to prophecy from the very Word of God. But you see, what happened today? What happened with the Bible today? Again, the 80,000 versions of adding to the Word of God, taking away from the Word of God, perverting Scripture, doing something with it that was never meant for it to be, telling people they want to uh, use language and words to trip people up. They'll say, this is the way you should interpret the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, to interpret the Bible, So with that being said, and if you look in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5, 6, it says, thou, Add thou not unto his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So, what has mankind been doing? Adding to it, taking away, perverting it, changing it to suit their ideologies, to suit it as what they want to believe and what they want others to believe. And they'll come up with new books. Why not come up with the Quran? Why not come up with the Book of Mormon? Let's come up with, in fact, let's take the Jehovah Witness and change the Bible to fit their doctrine and call it the Holy Bible Scriptures. But call it a new version. And that's what's even going to happen with the woke movement. You're going to have a gay Bible, ladies and gentlemen. Mark my words, it's coming. And if you burn the gay Bible, you will go to prison. It's the same way with the Quran, the same way with the Bible. All these things that mankind makes up in their culture, within the flesh of the natural man of this world. Because we know from Scripture there's nothing good in the flesh. So why would you expect mankind to come up with something that's going to make any sense, that's going to further the euphoria that they're looking for, so they can sit there and worship what they want to worship, when they want to worship, and by golly, you better be accepted out of it. Otherwise, too bad. Now, isn't that interesting? They want you to be tolerant of them. But you don't. they don't have to be tolerant of you, do they? See, that's the oxymoron. That is the problem with this. That's, that's the paradox of all this. And the irony. I can sit here and make a video and I can tell you, burn the Quran, burn the Bible, burn the Book of Mormon, burn the new 80,000 versions of Scripture, burn the Holy Catholic Bible of uh, Roman Catholicism. 
What do you think Jesus Christ would do today if he came down and saw this big mess that mankind has done with his idolatry? And that's all that is, is idolatry, worshiping something other than the original God of all creation. Because Paul says something interesting in Romans chapter 1 when he talks about mankind is without excuse, actually, even though they didn't, they didn't have any written word, they knew about the Creator and the awesomeness of what the Creator was capable of doing. They'll be without excuse. Yet, over the millenniums now, it has got to a point where it's all about what you hold in your hand or what you read, but have you noticed the reading of the words, the Logos, if you will, is being replaced by videos, by, uh, it's going to be replaced by artificial intelligence, it's going to be replaced by modern technology that is not of any type of written word, ladies and gentlemen. That's what's coming down the pike. There is going to be no availability of written words. But that is also going to be destroyed. You see, all of this is going to be destroyed someday. Now, do I, I don't sit here and tell you I condone this kind of activity. If somebody has a firm belief and is willing to stand up for what is their actions are and they want to burn the books, burn the books. If the conviction is good, if it is a conviction that warrants scriptural provocations, then there's no problem because they're going to be judged by mankind in this natural world, in this flesh. Absolutely. They'll probably even be condemned. They'll probably be end up in prison and taken off. Maybe even social media platform like I may be with this video. So be it. We are going to become your enemy because we tell you the truth. You just look at it and you look at religions, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Islam, whether it's Buddhism, whether it's um, Mormonism, whether it's Jehovah Witness, or all the denominations and non-denominations we have under Christianity, plus all the religions of cultures throughout the world, mysticisms, uh, Hinduism, uh, reincarnation, all these kind of things. What have they done? They've, and uh, these New Age religions, which aren't really New Age, they just come back, resurface again uh, every once in a while, uh, from the Tower of Babel. It's the same with cults. They're all out there and people worship in these. They, you know, they claim they don't, but if you belong to one of those, you worship in one of those because you identify with one of those. It's just like some most, one of the most ridiculous humanistic movements in this world, something called Unitarianism. Then there's Scientology. There's all these religions that they quote as a religion are of a false entity. It's no different than setting up the things in the temple of, the, of God where people defile the temple. Well, people are defying the very temple of Jesus Christ today, the cross, and that Jesus Christ definitely does not live within these people. His spirit is not in these people. There is no spirit within these people, ladies and gentlemen, because the spirit is dead. So they will cling to whatever it is, and that's what's going to happen. And it's going to get worse because Paul talks about that in the Revelation of the Mystery in uh, Timothy. They're going to have itchy ears. They're going to fall away. They're going to uh, leave doctrines of devils. They're going to have itchy ears. They're going to turn from the truth and believe the fables. That's why we must stand strong and we must promote no matter when it is. We must Give the word of God with sound doctrine. And that's why it's important to study the word of God because there's going to come a day, I don't know if it's going to be in my lifetime, but there's going to be a day when there's not going to be any books available to read. Then what are they going to call? What are they going to do when they have no books to burn to protest or whatever the case might be? Are they going to go against AI, artificial intelligence? Uh, good luck with that. But this is all stuff that's coming down the pike. That's why in a, a video like this, I have no problem sitting here and telling you that are viewing this video. You want to burn a Quran? Go ahead. You want to burn a Bible? Go ahead. You want to burn any other religious book that's affiliated with any kind of false religion or cult? Go ahead. You want to burn any satanic books? Go ahead. 
Because if your convictions are of Scripture, if your convictions are of the Jesus Christ of Scripture and of the revelation of the mystery, although he tells you, you try to get along with people as best you can, but you're a soldier for Jesus Christ, an ambassador for Jesus Christ, and you are a evangelist for Jesus Christ, and what you're fighting against and wrestling against is not flesh and blood. But you understand the dangers of the flesh and blood because they are, pre are being represented by spiritual witness in high places, principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness of this world. That's what you're fighting against. You don't necessarily have to go out and burn the books, but you can just go out there and tell people, let's burn them if you want. Something has to be done. And it's going to be done in a mass scale. It's not going to be done now by putting out a video like this. But Jesus Christ will make sure one day it's all going to be wiped out clean. And I'm not talking about just books here. I'm talking about statues. I'm talking about buildings. I'm talking about the symbol of the cross. I'm talking about all these idolatry symbols, whether it's the moon of Muslims, whether it's whatever the uh, statue of Buddha, the god of Hinduism, all the idolatry of Roman Catholicism, all these religious items are going to be wiped out and no longer going to be a part of the existence of Jesus Christ's kingdom. Because they represent sin, they're all part of the contamination that Satan has brought in since the fall of mankind back in Genesis chapter 3. That's why to sit here today and tell you, go ahead, Start getting rid of the idols. I have no problem with that. I'd promote that. And I have no fear. If they want to cancel me, if it's my last video, so be it. You have the truth. What you're going to do with it is, beyond, is entirely up to you. Because, ladies and gentlemen, in the long run, what is going to happen to all the people that you accepted, that you had showed respect for, because you just wanted to get along with them? Even though you disagree with what they're doing or what they represent, you still, in that aspect, are condoning what they're doing, because you're not standing up against it. And guess where you'll end up? With them, in hell, waiting on a white, great white throne judgment and ending up in the lake of fire forever because of that issue, that respect, that civil camaraderie so you don't make civil unrest. You don't want to promote hate speech. You don't want to promote violence. You don't want to promote unrest, uh, destabilization, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to title you want to put to it because you went along with everybody because that's who you are. You're a Christian you're loving, you're full of compassion, understanding. Was Jesus Christ full of compassion and understanding when he cleansed the temple? Was God full of understanding and compassion when he brought a flood on this earth that killed every living creature with, on this earth except for eight people and two of every living creature? Was he full of compassion and love? How about the people he destroyed throughout the Old Testament? And the reason behind it was justifiable by God. That's why Jesus Christ, everything he did was justifiable, and the things that he's going to do are justifiable. But we will continue to let this build, see? We won't destroy the books. We won't burn them because we want to get along with everybody. It's going to be to our destruction, ladies and gentlemen, in the end. That's key here. It's going to be our destruction at the end. If we don't take a stand against this evil that is in the world today, run by Satan and his dynamic, demonic helpers that are all over the place doing his bidding for him and drawing people in by the billions, whether it's through religions, whether it's through uh, cults, whether it's through governmental entities, whether it's through culture issue, cultural issues, economical issues, educational issues, it doesn't matter. Our political issues are all going to be in the same place at the end. So with a video like this, I showed you from scripture what's coming and I used examples in scripture when Jesus Christ couldn't take it no more 
and had to destroy what it is. Mankind has polluted and mankind has perverted. And that's what mankind has done with the Bible, which was originally the Holy Scriptures of God's Word, spoken through the prophets as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Look what they've done with it. You aren't going to recognize the Bible in 20 years, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have an original copy. You're going to be told things, and then you're going to believe these things because you don't know any difference, see? You'll be indoctrinated into their ways of thinking, their ways of practicing, their religions. And it'll be Satan, because you're going to see Satan's eyes just above the level of the water, and they're going to look beautiful. And you're going to look down at him, and when you do, the rest of him comes out from underneath the water. The jaws of a crocodile, and will devour you in an instant. That's how he works. And that's what's happening in this world, ladies and gentlemen. That's why there's unrest. Just look at all the terribleness, things that are going on. And it's going to get worse. But there's going to be a time in this age of grace that God is dealing with us today in Jesus Christ's finished work of the cross of grace where he's not passing judgment. You better take advantage of that if I were you because there's going to be a time when the age of grace is finished and he's going to come down with his justice and his judgment of like the world has never ever seen and will never ever again see and experience what he's going to do to you in a great tribulation. If you live through it. If you don't live through it, if you die before the great tribulation, you're going to be in hell anyway. And that is going to be something that is going to be with you until you leave hell and end up at the great white throne judgment and then be cast into the lake of fire, which is even worse, for eternity, never to escape it. Something mankind in his finite mind and finite wisdom cannot comprehend. Because we're in the realm of time. We know we have a beginning. We know we have an end. We're, going to, we're born and we die. But they don't have any comprehension about what happens after death, see. When time ceases to exist, you're in a constant state of suffering, knowing no beginning and no end, and without God. You can escape all this. You can have the freedom that is in Jesus Christ, who sets you free in the liberty of Jesus Christ, where you're going to be no longer under the bondage, the yoke of bondage. You won't have to worry about this kind of stuff. You don't be dragged into this kind of stuff. You will not have to answer because you're going to be uh, judged with what it is you believed. You either believe the gospel of Jesus Christ or you didn't believe it. You're going to end up in hell if you don't believe it. That is one thing scripture tells you. But if you believe it, you're going to have everlasting life with Jesus Christ, ruling and reigning with him in the heavenlies as co-heirs with Christ in God. And that is just by believing the gospel, which is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. It says in verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what was preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, For I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. You believe that by faith and faith alone, because that is a gift of God through grace, the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. Revealed in the revelation of the mystery and the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in today, because it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, yet not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. I challenge you, ladies and gentlemen, to view this video. Where are you in the realm of all this? Are you accepting? Are you a loving Christian? Are you just somebody that wants to love? And because love is love is love, and you just want to get along with everyone? Well, if you get along with everyone now, you better, because you're going to spend eternity in hell, first in hell, and then in the lake of fire for eternity with the very same people. And it won't be as pleasant as it was when you were condoning what they do while you were on this earth. When you had a chance to speak out, to tell people the truth, instead of going along with the great lies that Satan and his demonic helpers 
had been feeding you your entire existence. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate your listening. This is a home Bible study. My home to your home. This is Robert Holler. Thank you. And always remember, good Lord willing, if there is another time.